Hi, everybody. So guess what? Trump got his guy in at the FCC, Ajit Pai. Uh, Senate con- reconfirms FCC Chairman Ajit Pai for five more years. A big victory for your internet service provider. So that sounds like a big loss for me, my internet service user. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a big loss for us, right, Oh, Ron? yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. the public was not a fan of this guy. Uh, he is adamantly anti-net neutrality, as, as this piece goes on to talk about, as we've talked about on this show before. So here we go. In a 52-41 to 41 vote on Monday, seems like a lot of people didn't vote, the U.S. Senate reconfirmed Ajit Pai to another term on the Federal Communications Commission, all but ensuring that his efforts to deregulate the telecom industry and destroy net neutrality will carry on. Any Democrats vote for this guy? Four. Yes. Four Democrats did vote. The vote to reconfirm Pai, whom President Donald Trump elevated to the role of chairman this January, fell primarily along party lines. The Senate vote to give Federal Communications Commission Chairman Ajit Pai another term on the FCC yesterday went mostly along party lines. But four Democrats joined the Republicans to approve Pai's renomination. Really? I disagree with Pi on net neutrality, but the president has a right to the chairman because he won the election, Senator Claire McCaskill said. So she was one of them. So Senator Claire McCaskill should be primaried and gotten rid of Mm -hmm. as hard as and quickly as possible. And there is no point to having Senator Claire McCaskill be a Democratic senator. Because ruining net neutrality is the thing that will ruin everything for anybody besides a huge corporation. So if you want to get screwed over in the the only thing we have helping us is the Internet. That's the only thing we have going for us is the Internet right now. That's why Bernie's able to fundraise on the Internet. That's why people are able to have a, the only. And now you want to take that away. And Claire McCaskill goes, well, I, I, I just I think that is bad. I agree with you, Jimmy. But the president should be able to screw you over, even though I'm an elected representative. I should just go along with it. I'm not going to fight against it. Not going to push back. Well, and it it is interesting you bring up Bernie because this is not something any of us are going to be too happy about. Bernie was one of the people that did not vote on this. Bernie did not vote on this. Nor did Menendez. Why? Where was he? I don't know. But, yeah, Bernie did not vote for whatever reason. I I hope there's a decent reason. I I hope there was a reason. We'll find out, I guess. The other Democrats who voted to reconfirm Joseph Manchin, of course. Yeah. Gary Peters, Democrat of Michigan, and John Tester of Montana. Manchin and Peters said they want Pi's help with broadband deployment. Yeah, it sounds like a big straw man. McCain did not vote either. Net neutrality advocates have long accused Pi of toiling on behalf of major broadband carriers to ensure a future in which the open Internet no longer exists. So you... Those allegations. So, those, so by the way, so Trump is such a nightmare. The Democrats can't help but go along with him. Yeah, I mean, there's he's your such resistance. a nightmare. So, uh, is Joe Joe? So, I should be just as afraid of Joe Manchin as I should be, and John Tester as I should be of Trump. So, this <laughs> is the problem you have when you try to scare people about Trump. The Democrats fucking vote with him all the time. I mean, net neutrality was the one issue where the Democrats were really walking in tow. I mean, Al Franken made it one of his primary issues. I mean, almost every other tweet the guy has is like pro net neutrality. And they, you know, still four of them got in line for for Ajit Pai. Those allegations are hardly without merit. Pai seeks to dismantle regulations that prevent Internet providers like Verizon from slowing traffic to websites whenever they wish. He's eager to roll back rules that stop providers from blocking online content at their discretion. And he opposes restrictions on carriers that prohibit them from accepting payments to speed up websites beyond that which their lesser competitors can afford. This all sounds like window dressing, all that stuff. That all sounds like bullshit. That all sounds like he's going to get rid of net neutrality. And, but here's a lot of great stuff he wants to do. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, so yeah, why, I mean, then why it's... get rid of net neutrality then if you're if the, if you really don't want anybody able to speed up or slow down then why get rid of it? Yeah, yeah. Well, he he entertains some fantasy yeah. that oh the market will just work itself out and Comcast told us they're okay with yeah. net neutrality. They're going to uphold it. They're against Title II designation so that it's assured, but they're going to uphold it just just out of their own goodwill. You know, you see, how... they're good people there. Yeah, I mean, look how the free market sorted out healthcare. 
Yeah, exactly. It's all fixed. You know, every time I hear that the market's going to sort itself out, yeah. really what I hear is the market is going to fuck you. Yes, that is the exactly. The regular person, you're going to be screwed. Yeah. You mean to say that the invisible hand just has a middle finger raised at you like this? Is that what you're saying? It seems I like think it. I'm with you. <laughs> In speeches and public statements, Pai has conveyed that he has no intention of holding telecoms like AT&T and Comcast accountable. His goal instead is to give these industry giants free reign to manipulate and control the Internet for their own gain under the delusion that the market will sort everything out in the end. To it, the past does not support Pai's perspective. Oh, you mean history is against him? You mean the facts and the evidence is against Pai? Really? That's weird. Some guy with a pro corporate position and his facts don't support it. That's so weird. It's almost like it happens every time. To wit, the past does not support Pi's perspective. Internet providers have a long history, in fact, of curtailing online freedom and service of their stockholders. Verizon, T Mobile, and ATT, for example, collectively block 241 million consumers from using Google Wallet several years ago because the service competed with the one that each had a financial stake in. So they had their own version of Google Wallet, which was unfortunately named the ISIS Mobile Wallet. <laughs> it's like when they had that diet pill. You're too young to remember. So in the 80s... Thank you. In the 80s, when they had uh, when uh, AIDS was first diagnosed, was a thing AIDS. There was, no, there was this disease before. Now all of a sudden there was a disease called AIDS. And everybody was scared to death of it because mm -hmm. we thought you could get it from sitting on a toilet seat and a mosquito could get and you could die like that. And it's a horrible way to die. And it was called AIDS. And then they had commercials literally running on TV for a diet pill called AIDS. <laughs> get AIDS. It'll help you lose weight. It's literally what the commercials were. Steph, do you remember that? I think it yes. was like a choc like a candy that you yes, eat it was like to, a, a yes, uh, to suppress appetite, your appetite. Suppress it helps uh -huh. you lose weight. AIDS. And I bet if we looked on the YouTube, we'd find that commercial. Anyway... So in 2012, Verizon was fined $1.25 million for blocking tethering apps because it allowed consumers to forego its obnoxious $20 tethering fee. Five years. So these are all examples of how the market doesn't help yeah. you. It, the market actually, the market corrects itself in a way that screws you. <laughs> okay. Five years ago, AT&T blocked certain iPhone users from accessing FaceTime unless they upgraded to a more expensive data program. So these are just... Real quick examples, just before the vote to reconfirm him passed on Monday, an online petition calling on the Senate to disavow Pi's chicanery sailed over 130,000 signatures. So, goodbye net neutrality. It's amazing that the Democrats will allow those Democrats to be in their Democratic caucus and vote against. To me, that's to me voting against voting to end net neutrality. Could there, it's like voting to privatize Social Security. Hey, I'm against privatizing Social Security, but the president gets to do what he wants. That's what yeah. Brian McCaskill says. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was I'm not going to fight against it. I'm not going to fight against this horrible thing I'm against. I'm going to go along with it. Why? Because I have some bullshit reason, and that's why Claire McCaskill needs to lose. We don't need Claire McCaskill in the Senate. We need to get rid of her, and we need to primary her, and she's being primaried. Yeah. Yeah. So she's being primaried by a justice Democrat. Mm -hmm. So I will fight to get rid of Claire McCaskill as hard as I can. In fact, I'm going to start making some, one video a week, get rid of Claire McCaskill. How about that? Let's do yeah, that. Yeah, no, why not? I mean, because that's just, it's not like net neutrality is some like like soft issue. Right. Like, like it's not just like, like it's like, well, I, I disagree on on his goal to yeah. completely gut a medium that we need. Right. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, whatever, he won. Like, he won, are, are so. Are you kidding? I guess we have to give up. I guess <laughs> I have to give up. The people who voted for me, uh, they voted for me to go along with Trump. That's what Claire McCaskill is saying. Mm -hmm. The people who voted for me, Claire McCaskill, voted for me to go along with Trump because Trump won. And now you know why the Democratic Party is a dead party. Portland, Oregon, the Jimmy Dore Show is coming to the Alberta Rose Theater November 12th. And we're going to Burbank, California, November 6th. And the Hollywood Improv on October 16th. There's a link for tickets right down there. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com for all links for all shows.